What's up, man? Hey, man, I got in. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I don't see your video. It's fine. We don't use video. I'm just going to pull the audio, so that's no biggie. There you go. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah man. What's good, man? How you been? I'm good, man. Yeah, this is – what a trip, man. You know, 20 years of, uh, of listening to you, this is this is a, a, a treat for me. So thank you for taking the time. No, thank you. You know, um. I'm I'm starting to reach out to the press now um, to inform everybody about the new single, which is dropping May 15th, which is actually our 20th anniversary of Cold Vein. And it's an important time, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm glad to be here to explain, you know, music and ideas and, you know. I'm with you, man. Yeah, so... Basically, we're, we're going to talk about the single, you know, Metal Ox, Raspberry Jelly. Um, I really wanted to kind of just take. Um, so what I did was I, I prepared a question for each one of the 15 songs on the cold vein, but they go to, they go to different places. So we're going to go that's, to. Diff- that's very that's very dope. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go to different places here because. All right. So so I, this this record was almost like the audio version of like Blade Runner, to be honest with you. It was like futuristic as hell. Um, we're, let, let's talk about Iron Galaxy, okay? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a line, and you already know your line because you spit it. Uh, I rest my head on 115 because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> because miracles only happen on 34, right? Because mir- miracles only happen on 34, so I guess life is mean. That caught me off guard. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna spit a line, and basically from there I'm gonna pull a question. To me, this song in particular, I feel is like the unofficial sequel to New York State of Mind, um, because it's just like it, it describes. You know, I'm I'm a New Yorker. We're, we're I'm doing this from Long Island, but like the city was big to me. So to me, this this introduction was like listening to New York State of Mind Part Two. Like it's just it's like the new it's like the the, the decade later and stuff. So if you if you want to speak on that, that's much respect. Um, wow, much respect, especially talking to a kid who grew up listening to nods. I'm your age. You know what I mean? So <laughs> much, res- much respect. Like, I grew up listening to Nas. So for someone to tell me when I heard Iron Galaxy, it took me there. Yeah, yeah. That's mad respect. I, um, wow. Iron Galaxy. It's kind of like, it's one of our staples. We... <laughs> We have like, I would say a handful of of songs that just, they represent everything we are. And Iron Galaxy is one of those. Um, We have like five songs where it's like, that's them. That's who they are. If you hear these, you know, a couple of songs, this is who they are. And Iron Galaxy is one of them. 
Yeah. Um, a very emotion, a very emotional song. Um, a very personal song. Being kids that grew up in the inner city, urban, you know, uh, situations, the ghetto, uh, you know, uh, crime, hope, dreams. All of that is right there. It's right there. Like you, you see it. I mean, and even like one of the coldest lines, because it's so hard, is like, you know, you were stillborn baby, you know, and like at first you're thinking like, oh, that's fucked up. And then you you get into, you know, the next line. Mama didn't want it. But it's just, it's like that, like, man, that, that kicked off pretty hard for me. So Iron the Galaxy, still, the no. stillborn, the stillborn baby is like you said damn that's fucked up yeah yeah but it gets worse when you're forced to live and your parent doesn't care about you that's that's and, and i had to pardon me i had to bring that up and and you know that doesn't apply to me uh god bless my mother she passed away last year condolences man um she had a stroke um and right after she had her stroke, the COVID shit shut down the world. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, bam, bam, I got hit. And my father died two weeks after my mother. My, my, my father, but my father was battling cancer. Yeah, yeah. So my mom was the shocker. Yeah. The family already knew that my father was passing. Yeah, yeah. R rest in peace to, to both of them. That that's pretty brutal. Two weeks apart, I can't even imagine. April seventh and and April twentieth. Yeah, yeah. My father, my father on four twenty, the same day that I released "Look, Mom, No Hands." Yeah. And April seventh, we released my mother. She was in hospice, so we released her off of the machines and let her go peacefully. Yeah. But um, yeah, like just just you know, just going through all of that has been traumatizing. But that's the energy. It's 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 situations like that that help me write Iron Galaxy. Nah, you're you're right because I, I I play music too, man. So like um, unless. Like I, my music comes, you know, I play guitar, like I play in a rock band, <laughs> but you know, like I, I, I come from like, uh, you know, like it's, if nothing bad happens to me, it's hard to write. But when, as soon as something like traumatic, like something's got to happen to me to like, you know, like shake me up to be like, I got to write about this and shit. It shakes you. It shakes your soul. It shakes your bones. And I talk for myself and I talk for people that don't know how to attack, how to articulate. So when you're listening to, you know, all of my music, you know, especially Ken Ox, you're listening to um, an honest, an artist that's just honestly sharing what the people go through on a day-to-day -day basis. It could be pleasure, it could be pain, but it's going to be honest. It's you this, know. this record is is a perfect combination. I'm going to talk about it later on one of the songs. It's a perfect combination of bars with poetry. You know, it's like split down the middle. Like there's like some poetic shit, but then there's bar. Like it's just it's it's a great record, man. So I'm, I'm going to say number two, Ox out of the cage. Right. And I'm going to say I grab the mic like, are you experienced? But I don't play guitar. I play my cadence. OK, so I play my cadence. I'm going nice. to I'm going to ask you vast. I um, I'm not an MC, so I hope I'm not butchering the lines, <laughs> but I'm going to ask you outside of hip hop. Any other influences? I know that, that you made a playlist for your dad and the first song was Metallica's Faith of Black. So actually, that playlist was actually kind of very heartfelt, like all the songs on there. Definitely. But any outside I'm of hip hop? Uh, my parents, my parents love music. I come from a musical background. My father, he, um, when I was born, he had a record store. It was called Hammerhead Records. It was in the Bronx. And he had that store for a while. He was actually uh, selling records and selling marijuana. Nice. Um, 
So yeah, rest in peace to my pops. Peace to the legacy of Hammerhead Records. Hammer is one of my dad's nicknames. Hammerhead Records. Um, so I I grew up with Ron Isley in this ear, Parliament in this ear, yeah, Queen in this ear, Metallica in this ear. Cool. I grew up through that. Even as a teenager, my parents had separated, but I would visit my pops on the weekends and I eventually would finish high school with him. Even hanging with him, he loved Metallica. Me too. <laughs> and, and it would throw people off because supposedly we're only supposed to like hip hop and R&B. Meanwhile, black people made rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, where and, do you? But where mu do you, music is music, you know. Like it's to me, music. Like, I, where do you, where do you get telling us? Oh, y'all only like soul and rap. It's like I know who Bad Brains is. Yeah, I, I, I think like where we grew up, like I don't feel like it's it's that much of it now, especially like in in the circles, you know, like the indie rap or like the, just like I feel like New York, especially like you like everyone knows you like all the shit that you like. So um, I think once you get to a certain age, you're like, yeah, I, I could listen to fucking Slayer, Wu-Tang, Johnny Cash. Like I hit play and if I like it, I'm going to fuck with it. And if I'm not, I'm not. That's it. I'm not going to knock it. I'm just going to be like, that ain't for me. So it makes one sense. Of biggest, one of the biggest concerts in hip hop history is Run DMC with um, Aerosmith. And with Aerosmith. And an uh, echo of that is Wu Tang and Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, that was a good show. You know what I mean? So you have to ask yourself. You have to be real, you you know, you have to be real, you know, um, with yourself. Good music is good music. Um, I've always loved rock, good rock and roll bands as a little kid. And as a teenager, I was able to purposely seek out and listen to Pink Floyd yeah. or... You know, whomever, you know, maybe uh, Jimmy Page or Queen or whomever at the time, you know, um, I draw inspiration from all over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I draw inspiration just as much from Metallica as I do from Kooji rap. Yeah. So I want the fans to know that. And this is why I can make the music I make because my range of understanding melody yeah. and knowing what I'm capable of doing with my voice on a particular beat and my influence over the beat. A lot of people don't know that I'm a producer also. So I know how to tell the producer, look, this is better as the bridge. Yeah, yeah. And let's make this the hook. Hell yeah. That's that's the songwriting shit. Yeah. And then they do it and they look at me like, yo, and I'm like, see, you got so, an ear. You got an ear. So I have that ear. Like I'm I'm way more than a rapper. I'm a hip hop producer. Yeah, yeah. I produce songs. I could come in the room and make your song better, and I'm not even on it. Yeah, I mean I that's tell, what that's what a producer does, like that ear. Like you, I tell people, I tell people he gotta go first. He shouldn't be in the middle. He started too strong. Put him in the middle and leave, let him end it. Y'all knew he had to end it. Y'all did that perfect. And that's but that's if, if you if you put him first, it changes the look at his first six bars. Look how he's coming in on the one. Let him come in second. Let him be third. I'm telling you, I do it all the time. It's it's the you know? it's the beauty, like you said, your dad owning that record store and growing up in a record store. I mean, like back then, it's like, yo, 
back then, if you asked me 30 years ago what I wanted to do, like I wanted to own a record store or a video store. That's it. Like that was like the measurement, you know, so like to grow up in that, you know, like I would I would spend my life in video stores and record stores, you know, and, and I think I absorbed nothing but pop culture and music, uh, which is funny. Like I said, that's what we're the same age. So I guess we fuck with the same shit. But uh, yes, we definitely like all the same shit. Yeah, yeah. Cause I hear the lyrics. But all right. So number three off of off of the cold vein is Adam. Okay. Uh some say I touch hearts like Kano. Now every time you say you see a mic, you just say you no. Just say no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So and it's funny to talk about this the day that Mortal Kombat comes out on uh, HBO Max. Um, so what I want to ask you, this is Adam's family. Tell me a little bit about Adam's family. Wow. Much respect for you to even bring them up. Adam's family is the original crew that Cannibal Ox comes from. Uh, we have a lot of music with them that can be looked up. Look up Adam's family for the fans that are listening in. That's A T O M S family. Uh, the Adams family is a legendary New York crew. Shout out to them. I love them. That's my fam. A lot of close friends and, uh, part of me. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, we did a lot of music, um, coming up in the East coast, hailing from all over New York, New York state and New York city. Uh, repping upstate and the city. We were at every um, open mic function. We were at every, you know, um, <clears throat> pardon me. We were at every bragging rights. Um, you know, that was a great um, open mic that used to happen in the city. So anybody from the tri-state is really going to know us. Anybody from like, East Coast underground hip hop. We used to go to Massachusetts, Connecticut, all over, um, you know, just to get our name out. And I would end up meeting the juggernauts. Oh, yeah, man. I just saw them at the um, Fat Beats 25th. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to Bruin. Shout out to juggernauts. I love them. I'm going to get them on the record with me. Um you know, um, it's a crazy new time. And uh, I just want to get my peers on the record, people that were with, that were on tour with us, that were there, people that should have been on Cold Vein and they missed out, people that should have been on Blade of the Ronin and they missed out. I'm just working with that type of group of people, people that come from our era and they can and they could get down on the mic like that. So shout look out, out for that. Shout, shout out to Adam fam for sure. So that brings yeah, us to, to yeah. shout out, shout out to Adams. Um, shout out to Cryptic, shout out to Alaska. Alaska um, kills it. Hangar 18. Hangar 18, um, who are actually um um Hangar 18 is actually um wind and breeze in alaska yeah 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 yeah. Um, so shout out to them um you know i love them to death and i i definitely want to get a dope adam song on the new can ox record so oh, cool um so number four a b boys alpha okay so i'm gonna say hip-hop it was 88 even at age 10 uh fr phrases levitate okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm killing your shit. So in 88, we were the same age, obviously. Uh, what was it like growing up? And uh, what was it, Jamaica, Queens? Jamaica, Queens. Um, I started rhyming in Jamaica, Queens. Um, I was born. Let me let me start back. I was born in Mount Vernon. Shout out to Heavy D and the boys. Shout out uh, to P-Rock, CL Smooth. Yeah. I was born in Mount Vernon. I have to get that clear. I wasn't born in Harlem. I was not born in Brooklyn. Vast Air was born in Mount Vernon, New York, and I grew up in the Bronx initially. From the Bronx, I went to Queens. This is where I started to write. I was 10 years old. I was, it was 1988. Um, you know, phrases levitate, um, you know, 
Um, and yeah, Queens was an important time. That's my first rap group. Uh, BAH, shout out to BAH, Brothers at Heart. I was in a rap group with two other dudes and we were like 14, 13. And I was doing my best to learn, you know, how to structure songs and, you know, um, I love that era. Um, 88, you know, 88 had a lot of great records that dropped. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, a good time to of, learn. It's a lot of good music, but it's a lot of good visuals. Think of all of the movies and the shows that were out in 88. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, definitely the movies for sure. The movies, all of that. So, you know... And, you know, and and plus you get to enjoy anything that was 87, 86, 85. Yeah, no. And, and here's here's a funny thing that you mentioned, too, on I man, it must have been TV land uh, with the, the Mighty My record, a show I love. Parker Lewis can't lose. TV, actually, actually, God bless uh, peace to Milo. But TV land is melodious monk. OK. And TV Link, Melodious Monk is the producer oh, okay. that, that did most of Deuces Wild. Oh, was it Deuces Wild then? It was Deuces okay. Wild. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I love TV Land, and yeah. I'm getting ready to put all that back out, so. Yeah, yo, that song's banging, but like, it's like when you mentioned Parker Lewis, I'm like, yo, I grew up watching Parker Lewis. It was like the greatest this TV show. This ain't Parker Lewis, but you gon' lose. Yeah, I can yeah. do karate in platform shoes. shoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That line was crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. TV Land was my big homage to movies and shows, and I'm probably gonna have to do a part two to that. Yeah, man, that, that that's the shit right there. Um, so oh, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm about to put all that back out. So it's definitely dope. Um, number five is actually my favorite beat on the record. I think Raspberry Fields in 2001. Like, I mean, I didn't, never heard anything like it. Like that's like you know, this is the next lifetime, and you want to battle. You want to battle? Either you like reincarnation or the, or the smell, smell of carnation. Yeah, man. So, um. I, this is my favorite beat off this record. Now I'm going to ask you. It's something. one of mine. It's one of mine also. But in general, not on this record and not anything that you rhymed on. Give me some of your favorite hip hop beats through the years. Me or just any artist? Oh, no, no. I'm saying any art. Like your fa- like, you know, like, uh, ma- oh, you know, wow. mass appeal. Uh, the Jizza when the MCs came. Liquid Swords, yeah. So simple, but so to the point. I love beats that are made like that. It just had a nice loop and it had that climb. Blum, 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 yep. blum, 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 blum. It was so dope. Um, and also from that same record, Killer Hills, I love that beat. I am a Killer Hills fanatic. That's the, um, the synth, right? The thin, yeah, the synth was on that. Yeah, yeah. I love Killer Hills. I also love Black Jesus by Ghostface. Yeah. That is one of my favorite beats. Um, I love the group home. Anything from the group home is yeah. perfect. Yo, so I we- swear to God. I swear to God, God bless Primo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he gave them some of his best beats. Listen to me. Yeah, we just had on a, a guy that I think you're going to work with uh, at uh, Nightwalker. So me and Nightwalker, I asked. Yeah, yeah. I just did his song. Yeah, so he he was on like two two episodes ago. And uh, I, I asked him what his like Mount Rushmore of production was. And he names that record. And we had this same discussion. I was like, yo, Primo blessed them with that fucking record. He gave them, I mean, I'm just going to use superstar as an example. Yeah. He gave them (laughs) that. That is some of, that is some of the best premiere ever. And, um, 
it, it was a great, it was a huge influence on me. Um, I love a lot of Dre's stuff. I love a lot of the Neptunes. Yeah. I, I got I one love, for you. I love all of Easy, Easy Mo B's classics. Oh, totally. Yeah, like absolutely. Easy, Easy Mo B is a huge influence on me. Um, so I'm just trying to name, you know. No, yeah. That... I, I can always say Kanye. I can always say RZA. But I, I can always say Havoc and Alchemist. But I need to say Easy Moby. Yeah, there. I think very un- unsung uh, until you realize like the name, the songs he's attached to, and you're like, holy shit, he did that. Um, I uh, so I got one. I, I'll I'll just say I think J. Ru come clean. I I mean like that Ooh. beat is right. That beat is like I can't think of a better beat than that one right now. <laughs> Come Queen was such a moment in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 my shit. But um, all right. So number six, straight off the DIC. <laughs> all right. Uh, Def Jokes don't care about your culture or creed or the color, or the you, color bleed. you bleed. That's right. It'll be Ox versus aliens. Yes. Um. So I'm gonna pull from there, and I'm gonna ask you, tell me about Definitive Jokes. Definitive Jokes was a beautiful movement. You know, it was an extended movement of what Coflow was doing. Um, and Coflow was around some great musicians, some great artists, including Adam's Family, Indelible MCs, people like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Len, Jay Treads, Jean Grey, the Juggernauts, Company Flow, Mr. Lift, Aesop Rock. And one day, L was just like, I'm thinking about going full blast with a label. And I looked him dead in his eye and said, you got my support. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. Why are we always begging somebody to believe in something? We know what we do is great. Let's do it ourselves. And that was the beginning of that. Very cool. Yeah, that that's I, I, I was there. I would go to all the shows. Um, I like I said, it's just I saw it, you know, from from uh, Fun Crusher. You, plus saw it, the- you saw it as being a New Yorker and growing yeah. up with us. Respect, respect. Yeah, yeah I was you there. Know, it's a dope movement. Um, you know, uh, I wouldn't say the movement ended, it just blossomed and everybody went on to do their, you know, dreams and wishes. And, uh, you know, I still want to work with everybody and tour with everybody. And I'm even down to put together like a definitive jokes day or weekend where we can, you know, perform and, you know, I feel, I feel like that that'll happen. I feel like when L talks, you know, he just did the open Mike Eagle uh, episode on on this record in particular. And I feel like the way he talks about that time is I, I think he's still very um, I think he feels maybe like a little, uh, you know, just bummed that it ended. But, it, it, you know, you guys left a fingerprint and we're Kamu, still talking, you know, you know, Kamu, Kamu passed, and when Kamu Teo of the mighty megahertz passed, and of SA Smash, yeah, rest yeah. In peace, when he passed, I guess L felt like, you know, the, the industry is changing over anyway, so I'm gonna just, you know, restart and try new things, he met up with Killer Mike. They did some great things. So you know, it's a positive time. Absolutely, yeah. And you and I, I think I think now, um, you know, streaming, at the very least, I think streaming has caught up. I feel like it's they they, they fix certain things. You know that that weren't really happening. Like Spotify and Apple Music weren't really a thing in that middle time. Like you know, like the mid two thousands to like the 
earlies. Um, and I feel like now, you know, Apple, Spotify music, like people just get heard. And I feel like maybe, uh, eventually that pay scale will keep going up. So, but, um, I got number seven. Uh, so this was the lead single vein. Uh, I'm going to say all in all, it's all love. And I hear, I'm here to protect you only 12 years old. Someone will Someone will break your neck. That's right. Um, now, so I, the lyrics here, you know, to me, they kind of just mean like, you know, um, you know, maybe you're just kind of like watching like some of these young kids and the way they act. And like, you, you feel like, uh, almost sad for them in a, in a way that, that they, um, you know, that they're wilding out. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to ask you, like, as far as like music, like how has music positively affected your life that prevented you from acting? I mean, hugely, you know, when you heard an MC say, don't, don't go to jail, don't do drugs, don't this, don't that, you listened a little harder. Yeah, yeah. It was different from, I would say, a grandparent or a parent telling you something. When the cool person says, don't do drugs, don't end up in jail, wear a condom. We come from that era, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. <laughs> Put a condom on. When when a when a when an artist of that magnitude um uh uses their platform to share an important truth like that, it definitely is important and it in it in it influences the kids. Um, because we do look up to them. We idolize them. So when your idol says, leave cigarettes alone, when your idol says, you know, put a condom on, when your idol says, just say no, it's important um, because we, we, we look at them larger than life. Yeah, especially when you're younger, for sure. They yeah. could be an actor. They could be an athlete. You know, we we look up to them, so it's important. Cool. Uh, and and I de I definitely. Oh, I have to share this. Sure, sure. One of my favorite commercials when we were coming up was the drug dealer that was trying to sell you drugs, yeah. and every time he passed a pillar. He became more like a snake. Yes, I remember that. That was one of my favorite men. Yeah, I, I die. I go to YouTube every yo, now and then and just die laughing. I got yo, no joke. When you said that, I was like, yo, because as soon as you said the snake thing, I'm like, I gotta go to YouTube and fucking find that. <laughs> I'm telling you, and of course I love the one when the dad is like, Yeah, where did you get this? Yeah, and he's like, I got it from watching you. Yeah, yeah and he was, yeah. <laughs> so, which, yeah, which which I, I which I get now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I definitely get it. I get it. You know, um, shout out to New York for decrimin uh, for decriminalizing weed. That's right. Um, I will be smoking a fatty in the street when yeah. I come home. You know, I'm gonna be in New York. This is for you, by the way. I'm gonna be in New York in about two weeks, and I'm gonna be there for three weeks. I'm gonna be filming a video. So I'm going to need help getting crowds to come out to be a part of the video. So I'm going to let you know. Yeah. Metal Ox? Yeah, man. Metal okay, cool. Ox. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll talk after this for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm going to kick to the F word. Uh, I extend my thoughts in a relationship. But they sunk like Titanic relationship. But they sunk like the Titanic relation. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to. So from there, I'm going to say. I mean, great line, great fucking line. But I'm I'm gonna ask you on, on one of our earlier episodes, we 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 talked about our favorite hip hop love songs. What are some of your favorite hip hop love songs? Wow, uh, I'm looking at the front door, main source. Yeah. Uh, passing me by the far oh, side. That might that good one. That's a great one. Uh, no, Mountain Vernon. 
<laughs> oh man oh hell yeah he got a few um, yeah yeah uh pete rock uh um pete rock and cl smooth have a couple and definitely heavy d has a couple yeah um um i'm trying to think of like uh, you, you know, it's funny. Like I was going to send you some of these like in, in, in advance, but I'm like, I, I feel like it would ruin like that. Like, I didn't want you to think too hard of them, but it's fine. I mean, like you mentioned some, some good ones for sure. I mean, LL Cool J for sure. Like when I think of like, you know, doing oh, it. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. LL. There's a lot of them. My brain is going blank. But... I atmosphere. Like, you know, uh, slug. Oh, wow. Slug does one of those every Tuesday. So, yeah. <laughs> so it has felt, you know, him and him and Merce for sure. Yeah. Him, Merce and Aesop and yeah, uh, they, they, they're, they're emo like that. <laughs> but, uh, okay, cool. So let, let's do stress rap. That's like the number nine song on the cold vein. Um, raising hell to lower heaven. We explored all the crevices. Okay. Um, so to me, I'm thinking you guys are living in New York city. Uh, I think you guys moved in with L to make the cold vein, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, I mean, this is a very New York centric record. What do you remember about just, you know, living in that room with Vortal, uh, just making this record, anything? I mean, you know, you know, we, it's it's our friendship, the friendship that me, Mega, and L have, um, is such a crazy dynamic. We just understand each other's personalities, and you know, it comes off on that record perfectly. Um, were you listening to the beats as they were being made, basically, and be like, "Oh yes. shit." Right? Yes. Yes. Um, you know, we not only were we listening while they were being made, I would slow L down sometimes. Yeah. Because there'll be no space for the vocal. He'll just keep going. Yeah. So on Tuesday is the usually the version that I tweak. The version he gives us on Friday, I'm like, slow down. Yes. We need room for MCs, L, and he starts laughing. Um, yeah, but yeah, because he's got um, he's got, he's got like that style, like like he right. will keep he will keep layering and layering and layering. And what I did to L is I reminded him to keep the swing, keep the head nod, and leave that space for me and Vortal. You, you have to leave you have to leave a space for the voc the vocalist is an instrument itself so you know he could you know he could put 22 layers yeah. when he should have stopped at 16 yeah yeah no for sure and like the thing with the cold vein too that the, you like it, it, it didn't sound like anything up to that point. And it could have been an instrumental record to be, you know, like, cause it, the music was just so busy and, and coming from where we come from, you know, like big daddy Kane, like Eric B and Rakim, uh, fucking listening to hard to earn. Like it, it was such a non-conventional production that it's amazing that you guys, you know, the fact that it really worked out. And like you said, you, you peeled away some of those layers. So, you could jump in there and, and it just fucking worked great, man. And that's like yeah. 20 years later, yeah. we're talking about it. Yeah. 20 years later, you know, we're proud that we're able to talk about such a great record and such a great, you know, such great musicians and ideas. Cool. Um, so number 10 battle for Asgard. I am not really a comic book guy. I don't know much about it. I know you're a big uh, lover of that stuff, I assume, yes. lyrically anyway. Um, yes. So, plus... I have, a, I have a thousand comics in my <laughs> closet right now in milk crates. My name is closer to Thor's than yours, okay? <laughs> so, so, 
there's something about Thor because you also mentioned him uh, on the 2010 Street uh, Street Odyssey, and that's the song that you do with Vortal and uh, Raekwon, man. So, yes. what is it about Thor? Well, my my birth name is Theodore. Okay. So Theodore is grammarly linked to Thor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Theo. Theodore, Theos, and Thor. They're all connected. So that's what I meant by saying that. Now, Thor's hammer, it just represents the strength of Canox, you know, our lyrics, and also Wu Tang's lyrics. So it's like our lyrics hit you like Thor's hammer. Yeah, okay, cool. That's the vibe. And then Thor's hammer hits you like lightning. Yeah. So it's like, wham! It's like, you know, so that's the vibe I was going for when I named it Thor's hammer. Good vibe. And and here here's another thing. Like, did the, did the movie companies do those movies? Like, did, did you like the Thor movies? I do like the Thor's movies. I like the second one better. The first one needed work for me, but the second one we were proud of. Okay. And he got better in the Avenger movies. The Thor, his role. The Thor, his role. <laughs> yeah. The Thor I remember is Vincent D'Onofrio in Adventures in Babysitting. <laughs> I love that door. Also, that yeah, fucking movie's good. Um, all right, so number eleven, Real Earth. Uh, I also, I also love Elizabeth Shue for the record. Yes, yo, she. Do, do you watch The Boys? I, I do. I gotta catch up on it. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, she's on there. Um, all right, so Real Earth. Uh, Karate Cam Kid for life. Yeah. Oh, yo, for sure. Uh, so you fuck Cobra with uh, Cobra Kai, right? Cobra Kai. Yes. Yes. Sweep the leg. Yo, here, here's the thing about Cobra Kai. Like, what a brilliant idea to go. And, I think it all started from that trailer. I don't know if you ever saw that trailer. It's where it's spackles, yeah. It's, it spackles up certain holes. <laughs> we, wanted, we wanted to know, did he ever see the Korean girl again? Yeah. You and know, or the, or the Okinawan girl. Um... We wanted, you know, we wanted to know, you know, um, who does she really like? You know, was it him? Was it, you know, they spackle all of that up for us, and I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. I, I, me personally, like, because we it's talk done well. If it was done cheesy, I would be like, nah, you can't do that to Karate Kid. But we, uh, so we talked about like what we would like to see next with this treatment, I think it would be a lot of fun to do fast times at Ridgemont high. Like if they did the same thing, like where are they now? And like all that other stuff. So hopefully somebody will listen to this and that, do that. That would be phenomenal. Right. Wouldn't that be good? Uh, updated like a class reunion. Yeah. Yeah. Like 10 episodes of Ridgemont high. Yeah. I'm down for that. Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> She's got to put on the red bikini. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. So real earth Canox is like 007 and man from uncle. You yes. Off, you off the top rope, but I ripped the turnbuckle. Right. That's right. So uh, I, what I really want to reference here is I'm a big action movie fan and you reference two of them right there. What are some of your favorite action movies? Man. I love all of the classics that we came up with. I love Rambo, Commando. Commando is no joke. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, me, shout out to Liff. Me <laughs> and Mr. Liff probably watched Commando 10 times. <laughs> yo, yo Ray Don Chong, man. man. Like, Ray Don Chong, like, pulled out, like, the grenade launcher. Like, she was like, I just met this guy, and she's, like, blowing shit up for him. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that whole mall scene does it for me. Yeah. Um, uh, what are some good ones? Um, Death Wish. We love Death Wish. Yep. Um, the Death Wish series. Uh, I love Dirty Harry. 
Um, uh, you mentioned 007. Do you have like a particular favorite 007? I, uh, man. I'm a Roger Moore guy. I I love Goldfinger and I love Octopussy. Me too. Yeah. I love Octopussy. Shout out to the new single Metal Ox. I have a reference in that. Um, yeah. Um, what's a good one? Uh, action flicks. I like. I like the Mission Impossibles. I'm very proud of that series. Yeah, they're they're really good. They got better. They're good. They they did a good job with those. Um, anything. I love samurai flicks, karate flicks. Yeah, we're. I'll get to Blade of the Ronin too because I wanted to ask you about that real quick. But um, there's also a documentary called In Search of the Last Action Hero. I don't know if you saw that, but it's up on Amazon Prime and uh, it's fantastic. It's like a three hour movie on like just from from 60s action all the way to like the raid and shit. So shout out to that. I've got to check that. I love the raid. Yo, the raid. One and two. So good, right? How crazy I is that? I love Ungbok. You seen yeah. Ungbok? No, but I know what it is, but I haven't seen it. Oh my God. Watch Ungbok tonight. <laughs> okay. After the UFC. <laughs> Stop playing. Yo, you wilding. You yeah. wilding. Yeah. How can you see the raid? And but not- you didn't see Ong Bak. You're slipping in these streets. <laughs> all right, all right. You're slipping right now. I mean, I'm yep. telling you, all of the fans are laughing right now. Whoever that- saw, whoever saw Ong Bak is laughing their ass off right now because they know what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, listen, that's one hell of a cosign. So I, I love Tony Ja. Tony Jaw is amazing, and it all starts with Ong Bak. Okay, I, it's a trilogy. It's a, yeah. I was gonna say. I remember there's like three of them, right? Yeah. It's a trilogy, but you have to watch the first one. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care what is going on. Watch Ung Bak. I, I got a window today. No, no worries. I'll do that now. I'll let you know as soon as I see it. Um, it's so we, better. It's better than Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah. I mean, I I don't even. I I didn't even like the first. <laughs> I didn't even like the old Mortal Kombat. But the trailer looked good. Me. Listen to me. Like, no, a action head. No, yeah. no. I'm gonna leave. This is how I'm gonna end this rant. There is a 20 minute fight scene in Ungbok. Like he literally goes to like an underground fighting area and he fights like four men and each fight is three to four minutes. Okay, yeah, talking talk my language. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and each fight kept going higher. Yeah, it was like nah. Now you gotta beat me up. It was ridiculous. It I, changed. It changed my life. Like you have to understand, I have thousands. I'm a I'm a film buff. Me too. I mean I that's, have, that's that's what we talk about on here. <laughs> like like I have thousands and thousands of movies, and when it comes to the action, Hong Kong, Japanese. Thailand joints, I have them, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. I remember. I remember Saturday morning karate on Channel Five. <laughs> oh yeah, I have all. I have um. I have a folder of nothing but the Shaw Brother classics. Okay, I'm I'm on it for sure. For shout sure. out to my dad, the and hammer. shout out to my uncle who passed. They they put me on Shaw Brothers as a kid, and it stuck with me. So when Wu Tang came out, I knew all of their skits. That's right, yeah. I yeah. knew every skit. I was like, "Oh, that's that movie. That's that movie." So shout out to my father and shout out to my uncle on my mother's side. Um, because due to them, I know some of the illest Shaw brother flicks. They put you on and other flicks, you know. No, that's good. Yeah. You, you always need that older person to like to, to teach the youth for sure. And they did a great job. I watched 
I I listened to Liquid Swords with my father. And at the time, I didn't know about the Shogun Assassin. And he picked so it up. I watched, I watched the whole series with my dad in a weekend. It's six movies, the original series. Okay. Shogun Assassin. Yeah. Lone Wolf and Cub. All right. The dubs are five movies because they blended two movies together to make Shogun Assassin. So the dubs are five movies. If you watch the originals, it's six movies. Okay. <laughs> yeah. School, man. Dropping gems on here. I got to I gotta let you know. Yo, that... you're gonna be like, Cause you're going to be like, wait, I saw this, but it had a different name. I have I have an app. I, I have I think it might be on Shutter, like uh, Ongbok for sure. Because I I always scroll by it, so N- not not again. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no scrolling. <laughs> uh, no, no, you've got to watch it this time. You've I'm, got to. I'm in. Um, let's do ridiculous. So uh, my life's not right, right? Check one. My life. My, my right. So Check two. Here, here, here's what I'm gonna say about this because whenever i would go see the deaf jokes tour or like you know any of you guys doing your thing like it was always like my mic sounds nice check one (laughs) my mic sounds nice check two so what i'm going to ask you from ridiculoid which is a great song is tell me what the tours were like on this album i mean it was amazing to do that live um you know, just seeing the, the crowd's response uh, and and having them say, my life's not right. Um, it was it was definitely a beautiful thing to see thousands of people chanting that back at us. Um, and just, you know, doing music with my brothers, you know, it's always a beautiful thing when we can see a vision. And we saw the vision with Ridiculoid. None of us even had lyrics. And we would look at each other like, this is going to be big. You what, know. What, uh, what were some, like, aside from, like, New York, obviously home base, like, what were some other cities? Or even, like, you know, if you guys went overseas uh, that just had, like, a, a great crowd that received, that got what you guys were doing? Germany, Italy, um, Spain, they really, they really, you know, the Netherlands, France, Uh, I'm just, I'm just getting flashbacks. Good times, right? And these are areas where they understand English very well. Okay. Yeah. It's amazing. It's like their second perfect language, yeah. you know. Man, you get to travel through music, man. That's the best. Um, so let's do Painkiller, number 13. We're almost wrapping up the record here. Uh, we use medicine to numb the rap bar, whether behind bars or in front of scars. Yes. Okay. Now, very deep song. You know, me, I'm, you know, I've been sober for a long time. <laughs> I had a, I had a, an issue when I was younger. Um, but music, music takes away pain a lot of times, whether you're sad, whether, I mean, it's just when you hear certain songs, it makes you feel better. So I'm going to ask you, Vast, um, through your life, what are some songs that will always make you feel better? Wow. Um, well, a handful of them are on that list that I did for my pops. Yeah. And for my mom, I did one for my mom also. Um, what's what's my go-to when I need to like cheer up? Um, I like Jimi Hendrix. Um, I like hearing him do castles. Oh man, so good, so good. You should understand that you're a guitarist. Yeah. So good. Um, that's one. I like to go to Prince. Prince lifts me. Yeah. It's still dark, but it lifts me. It's like a lifting darkness. No, yeah, it happens for sure. Yeah. 
I like Prince to do that for me. Um, who do I go to? Oh, um, you know who I go to? I like uh, Black Moses. I don't know. I don't know Black Moses. I go to um, Isaac Hayes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Check out that record. You're gonna be like, "Wow, that's where these beats come from." Oh yeah, I know, I know. There's, yeah, there's a lot of samples on there for you. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check there. out, check out "Black Moses" by Isaac Hayes. Uh, "Castles in the Sand" for sure. Jimi Hendrix, uh, Prince. 99 gets me up, man. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's a great list. Um, cool. So that gives us the last two songs here, and then we'll, you know, we'll talk about what you're doing now. Um, hopefully, this wasn't too <laughs> painful for you. I thought I figured, no, if, it's, an, it's an important record, and I just, but I knew that if I picked certain questions from these records, we didn't have to stay on the record. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. Uh, so Pigeon. Pigeon is one of those uh, records that I told you about um, that I feel like really captures the spirit of, of the album, where yes. it's like, it's like this Pigeon is, is right? Pigeon, poetry. Pigeon, Iron Galaxy, and yeah. Metal Gear are our first songs. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Metal Gear. Shout out to that game. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't have more um, music than that. So we looked at those three as how to do the record. Yeah. Metal Gear can be found on the F word single. It's not on the record. Nope. And it represents our first song with LP was it was anything to do with the the video game yes yeah. everything to do with it <laughs> yeah that game was hard to beat everything to do with it <laughs> and, and, there's awesome. a huge, and there's a huge reference in the new single okay you can hear the snippets it's on my Instagram right now. Yeah, I've been listening to them. I've been listening to them. Um, so, yeah, let, let's, you know, since we're done with the record, um, I wanted to talk about the the, the thing now. So you, you're putting out a single. Um, why Can Ox Now? Uh, can Ox Now because it's needed and it's Can Ox forever, you For sure. know? As long as I'm alive, Ken Ox is going to exist. Um, you know, and I'm still here repping the legacy of my, of my family, you know, and, and repping the legacy of the art that I represent and the musician and peers that I represent. So it's important. You need Ken Ox now. You had Ken Ox when the buildings went down. How could you not have Ken Ox during COVID? Yeah, yeah. I you know? I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for that single and, and uh you know the full length for sure. And and also I gotta say, good fuel. I thought that's a great song. Cosmic does yes. some good ass beats, man. Yes, yes. And uh that will be future that will come out in the future. That's future Ken Ox. Just hold tight. Okay, yeah, yeah, but uh, so I, what I love about Good Fuel is the production. I think the production's amazing, um, but also some great references. There's a there's a Prince reference in there, and there's also a break in reference, which I fucking love. Which is funny because somewhere in, like maybe like next month, I'm going to talk to the director of Break in. He did uh, American Ninja and all the Ninja. Yeah, so he's like, it's funny that you mention him, man, because that's once again the shit that we grew up on those canon films. Yeah, I definitely, I love all of that. Oh, so, um, yeah, that makes sense because the girl from Breaking was in Ninja, Ninja 3. Three. Which he directed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes perfect sense. But yeah, I love all of that stuff. I love Show Kazuzi 
who oh, yeah. was in that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's like he was like the legend back then. He's the king of the king. all ninja movies. So <laughs> yes. Kiss the you ring. Know, he follow. He follows me on Instagram. I feel like a a, a G right yeah. now because uh, you know what I mean. He's 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 the man for sure. Uh, now I, one last question here. I I wanted to ask you because I really so I I talked to Adam Randall who is a, a film director. He did um uh, the movie I Boy, uh, and a few other things that are really good. And uh, Blade of the Road in the title track ended up in that movie. How did that come yes. about? Uh, Blade of the Ronin, actually Blade, the Art of Ox, ended up in the movie. And um, oh, yeah, yeah. Stop, stop. Randall, Randall was a fan and he reached out. Yeah, he's mad cool. He sent his people, you know, um, he sent his people to us and, you know, and it was dope. It was just, they were like, yo, we want to use this specific song. Yeah. And we we worked it out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Good business, you know what I mean? And we let them use the song. Yes, he. You uh, know what I mean? They paid us a nice, and you know, it was blessings that he used that song in a deep, huge, elaborate part of the movie. And a Netflix movie. I mean, like just like huge movie. Like his the movie before that he did was Level Up, which I thought was amazing. And then he did a movie like two years ago or last year actually that was like one of my favorite movies of the year called I See You. One of the smartest like fucking twists I've ever seen in a movie. I, I, have to, I didn't see that. Oh, you gotta watch that. It's so good. Oh, yeah. that. Matter of fact, you need to connect me with him because I want to do more music for him. He's just hit him. I just hit him up on Insta. That's it. Nice. Nice. Okay. It's just Adam Randall. Just hit him up. Like, be like, yo. I'm... Nice. Yeah. Nice. He's, he's he because hey, he's doing a, a new movie. I think they just rap. But uh, but yeah, cool. Uh, listen, uh, anything else you wanted to say? Yo, I mean, much love to the show. I want to shout out all of the real fans and shout out all of the fans that have been following us for 20 years. Um. I want to make it clear that because there's been a lot, I've been getting a lot of uh, messages in my social media. Yes, there is a full length coming. It's called Ox Caliber. That's Ox Caliber as in X Caliber. Yeah. Okay. Ox Caliber is on the way. Stay tuned. May 15th. Maxi single, two new songs and the instrumentals. Four dollars, so support. I'm also we're also gonna do um a physical at a later date. We're getting that in order. Artwork is crazy, and the video. It's, it's gonna be nuts. And I'm working on the video, and I'm calling out everybody to get in it. Real heads. So you're welcome to come through with the real heads. Yeah, yeah. Very and, cool. And you know, and you know, it should be the second week. It should be the second week of May. So I'll keep you updated. Okay. Yeah. And cool. yeah, yeah, man. I'm just psyched again. Um, I'm just showing the snippets for now to get the fans hyped. Yeah, I know. But, I know. I, I know the snippet thing. I'm doing the same thing. I got a record 521. <laughs> but oh, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to hear your stuff. And yeah, man, you know, it's just an important time. You know, moving forward, it's just going to be a lot of can ox moving forward. You know, I'm just putting my foot down on taking the brand and moving forward with it. I'm going to be reaching out to L. I want him to be a part of, you know, stuff moving forward. So there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be discussing. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, like, I, I forgot to ask you one thing, because uh, as a huge Doom fan, um, what, what what do you remember about working with Doom? You know, rest in peace. You know, just guy was such a legend. God, God bless Doom. Um, such a great dude, such a legend, a funny dude, a good hearted dude, very funny, very good hearted, you know, great sense of humor, 
and it's a great loss. Shout out to his family. Um, shout out to all of his close friends. I'm glad that he's at peace with Sub Rock. Um, you know, uh, I remember. Uh, I'm I'm thinking back 17 years now. Yeah, it is 17. Good math. <laughs> uh, when we did um, when we did look, mom, no hands, and he was doing um food. Yes, he he. Oh four was his year for sure. <laughs> And we worked, we worked hard, you know, he was doing um food and mad villainy. And uh, I was working with Mad Lib. Mad Lib had did six beats on Look Mom, No Hands. And I was like, yo, I gotta work with Doom. I had always loved KMD. Yep. I always loved Doom and everything he represented. And, um, I was proud to know that he was a fan of mine and we got in that lab and knocked it out. And um, I was so proud. That was one of my biggest, um, you know, biggest accomplishments with the Look Mom No Hands album. And also I would like to point out that I will be re-releasing the Super Friends on vinyl and it'll have all versions on it, remixes, and a nice special unreleased remix of me and MF Doom on a song he did called Air. Okay. Yeah. So look out for that. I'm getting that. Um, I'm getting that ready now. Hopefully it'll be out in the summertime. Well. Listen, this was a lot of fun for for someone for like me, uh, you know, been listening to you for the last 20 years. And the fact that I got to talk to you uh, and ask you some questions regarding your career and this record that we all love. Uh, thank you so much. Yo, blessings. And I'd love to talk again when we officially drop the Yo, single. Anytime you want. Stuff. Yeah, anytime. Just, you know, we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely make it link. I love your show. I definitely want to hear your music. And yeah, man. Yeah, we'll talk. It is what it is, you know. Metal Ox. Hell yeah. Metal Ox is the A side. The B side is Raspberry Jelly. We have another raspberry. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's going to be a dope throwback for people. You know what I mean? And yeah, man. It, you know, again, May 15th. But enjoy the snippets on my Instagram now so you can get an idea of how it's sounding. It's going to be real. Okay. Yeah. So it's we'll talk. And, and I, I know some people that do podcasts um, and they're fans of you. So I'll, I'll send them over your way. No, send them to me. I'm talking the press now. I'm yeah. talking the press. I've, this is my fourth podcast this week. So yeah, the, the, the rap. Uh, the dad bod rap pod. I love that show. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. such a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we'll talk soon. Yo, talk soon. Peace and love, man. Much love. Yeah, man. Much love. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll talk again. We'll link up in the city. Yeah, man. I'm in. Peace. Later. Yeah. to Jerusalem all day, every day. We bout to blow like Octane You know Cannibal Ox got mad slang Who cares what's your name? They say a man who repeats himself is insane I mix my saliva with propane Flame on I spit the hot fire with Dylon And stay inside the line with crayons My whole aura is neon Ultraviolet Come out your mouth I might get ultraviolet Now it's so quiet You was popping that junk Now it's so silent Here's another token, we are the chosen, wolves in the coven, blade of the Roman. We are the chosen, we are the chosen, we are the chosen.